And so I don't know how far you guys have progressed, but this stage 2.52, this one is actually hell. Like freaking Anemone. She is actually just like so freaking hard to kill. Like, I mean, she's freaking using skills from the ancient scriptures. Maybe <laughs> that, that kind of explains it, huh? Hi, welcome back to another Revived Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about a couple of tips, probably about 10 of them and like things to avoid. A lot of these tips were actually accumulated from the CBT, from the beta version, a lot of things that you just randomly learn. And I do think that every single one of them do have a lot of value. However, let's start off with tip number zero. And so if you guys head over to the settings, click your portrait profile, go to other settings, and then you see redemption code over here. What you can do is click redeem and then redeem for the code the beginning one word all caps I've actually already redeemed it and so this is not going to work for me but hopefully that pop-up gives you assurance that you will be getting something for the code and so I'll leave it for you guys to be surprised as to like what exactly the code gets you and so with that being said let's hop over to tip number one for tip number one I want to take you guys through to the settings because there are quite a lot of different like toggles you can do to make your gameplay just way better first of all you want your fps to be at 60 fps for that smooth smooth experience like look at that that is buttery smooth however a word of caution for you mobile phone players this may start heating up your phone like crazy and so i would completely understand why you would leave it at 30 fps on the other hand a lot of people do recommend using the tap for the movement type instead of the joystick and so what that means is that instead of using like the wasd or like pulling the joystick you can just tap and you will go there however me personally i do actually like the joystick and so i just left it as is and then the last setting i want to talk about is this guy over here auto combat default mode and free mode by default it is set to default mode and i would ask you guys to change it to free mode so that you have a little bit more control during the auto combat all right and so that pretty much summarizes everything in regards to the settings and so let's head over to tip number two ah i don't have enough stamina but essentially guys tip number two starting from about chapter three onwards you can actually indeed skip mobs so unfortunately i can't show you guys because i am out of stamina but if you guys do go into a map what you will notice is that like the space between like the monsters and the treasure chest or like getting past the monsters it it actually becomes very very feasible now then why exactly would you want to skip mobs you guys see this thing up here this is your stamina we love stamina and what actually happens when you skip mobs is that you get a partial refund on your stamina and so for example if this stage three four originally costed 20 stamina and say i was able to skip like three or four mobs then the actual stamina cost would only be about like let's say 14 or 13 something like that right and then what we really want to do with that stamina is sink it back into uh, these guys over here. The dream world, you got your mana dreamland, you got the ascension materials. There is a lot of energy that is about to be poured into these guys. And so guys, that is why I would highly recommend skipping those mobs because you can save the stamina to be pumped into these more efficient stages. And so guys, with that being said, I want to move on to tip number three. And that is if you are stuck on a particular stage, like for me, I was stuck on this boss for so long. Chances are you are either under ascended under geared or you have not farmed enough skill points but what i do want to say is that out of all of these different things it's most likely going to be the ascension and so guys i have shuffle over here she is at level 30 out of 30 ascension zero and so if i go ahead and click ascend you'll see look at all of those stats from just ascending from a0 to a1 she will be gaining 37 percent stat across all of her well, stats and so for me personally i was stuck at 2.5 on that freaking boss uh, the anemone honestly this thing is just the bane of my existence she ate up so much freaking stamina that it just was not funny anymore and so i actually had to spend quite a fair bit of stamina pumping up like my mana reserves because mana is oh my god everything is mana hungry but on top of that i had to go grind out the ascension materials from the dream world and so guys next we have tip number four within the dream world so like these guys over here these stages once you have cleared a stage you can actually auto it kind of i don't want to say for free but essentially you can't fail the auto and so as you can see i do have the option here because i was able to clear it once and so if i did have stamina and i went ahead and clicked auto you can be assured that you will be successful in every single run and so that's just a really nice feature what it means is that you just need to be able to push past all of these stages once all right guys and so let's go on to tip number five which involves uh the gold feathers oh 
sorry, the white petals and the gold petals. I would recommend that you guys save or hold on to your golden petals. And the reason is because golden petals, they're essentially like your yellow certificates from Arknights if anybody has played that game. And whilst you can use these petals to go like buy some rolls, it well, look at that. There is a UR right there. A flora is most certainly a UR. You can see the Primo gems background. However, something that is interesting that I see is 19 days remaining. And so what that's kind of telling me is that these URs may be going on rotation. And it may be true, it may not be true, but at this point, I would highly, highly recommend that you just hold on to it because there's no harm in doing so. That is unless like you're about to hit pity or something and you want some like of these soul cryolites. But otherwise, let's see what we get next month. Hopefully it's like Amanami or whoever, right? However, for this month, don't buy Flora because we actually do get her for free from uh, one of these starting events. I believe it is this one over here. So as you can see, Flora, you are Melody of the Lake on day seven we are actually able to get her for free. So yeah, hold on to those golden feathers or golden petals, whatever they're called, and don't buy the flora. All right, guys, next up, we have tip number six, which involves the witch courtyard. In particular, I want to talk about the firefly lampstand. So if I click into it, you're going to see that it's essentially just generating resources for you. It's generating you the white light as well as the blue light. However, when we first unlock the base, most people just kind of ignore it. And so there's actually nothing being produced. And so what I would recommend for this is that when you guys do unlock your um, the firefly lampstand, what you should do with your fireflies is dispatch them all into the white light. So you see this one over here, dispatch all. And then hopefully you'll progress a little, get some of the key materials to upgrade like the core base. By core base, I meant the magic tree. So it's just like this one over here. And so if I click into it, you'll see that the materials required to actually upgrade this guy, it says blue light now, but before it was white light. And so that is why guys, don't ignore that freaking firefly generator thing because you will be needing the white light Light, as well as the blue light you just need to like switch it back and forth as like you your needs change and so next let's talk about tip number seven which is add as many friends as you can and so as you can see most people already have the right idea but the friends every time you use a friend you gain 10 friend points every time you use a stranger I believe you get five friend points and so with those friend points you can come over to the shop and then under the supplies tab I believe yeah the supplies tab you can see that there is a friendship point point shop here. And so with these friendship points, you can just get a little bit like more goodies. And I know it doesn't look like much, but every single one of these items is stamina saved. And to be honest, guys, like these little incremental gains in the long run, they are really, really worth it. Again, for your Arknights plays, very, very similar to your friendship shop, and it essentially works the same way. So tip number eight, there is an event button over here. So if you go ahead and click on the event, you'll see it invite new player. Go ahead and click that one and you'll see that there is an invitation code down here. And then if you click share, it will just copy onto your clipboard, but it will also generate something a little bit cursed that looks like this. And so share that code with your friends. Where you enter it is actually, there is a box underneath this one over here. It says invite new player. And then there was originally another box, which was like, oh, enter another player's code. And so if you guys are watching this, go ahead and enter my code if you want, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let's, let's just get it, you know? But otherwise, I'm pretty sure there is like a maximum of five invitations anyway. And so don't use my code uh, too much is what I'm trying to say. Try to use each other's code and you should be good. All right, tip number nine. This is a pretty neat one. One. So if I go over to the equips, where is my witch? Uh, right over here. So witch, uh, I've got the rings. And so what I wanted to show you is these accessories over here. The one piece set effect for sorcerer gains 5% more mana after combat. I would highly, highly suggest that one of your characters that are in battle carries one of these rings. Because what this means is that after every single battle, you're going to get 5% more mana from like what it was originally. And I know that 5% does not sound like a lot, but again, in the long run, it is just savings. It is only good things. On the other hand, there is actually another ring that is very, very similar. This one over here. So this effect is called Scholar, gains 5% more EXP after the combat. And again, like in the long run, it is really massive. Because not only are you
you getting EXP for your characters? Getting EXP is also in a way saving your mana because getting EXP from the combat means that you don't have to sync your mana like using this thing over here. And I think at this point in the game, everybody knows how mana hungry we are. It just, it, it doesn't stop guys. It does not stop. We are grinding mana perpetually. And so that brings us to the last tip of the day, tip number 10, which is, well, okay. You guys can already see how hard I am simping, but that is not the issue. The tip itself is that the pity does carry over between each of the same banner. And so what you see over here, Awakening Summon versus Exclusive Summon, Awakening Summon carries over to another Awakening Summon banner. And so what that means is that when this one laps over to 1113, this 20 pity or like 20 to pity will be carried over to the next one. And the same kind of system applies for this one as well. So when the Exclusive Summon rolls over to 1124, you will get uh, the same pity counter. And so what that means is that you can in a way build your pity with the cheaper rolls. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys, but like previously, and if you guys do check and haven't rolled it yet, every single new banner that we get, we will get half off of the rolling price. And so what that means is that there is normally a button over here, a one-time use only, and it tells you that you can do a 10 pull for 1,000 gems. As you can see over here, normally a 10 pull costs 2,000 gems, a 10 pull for 1,000 gems, that's a freaking steal. And honestly, at worst, it just means that you're building your pity at half the price. Especially if you're not a whale and if you're like early on in the game, I mean, it's freaking day two, there's no way that you're not. I would highly recommend taking every single one of these discounted pulls. All right, guys, I think that's it. Honestly, I have like another 10 tips, but it's just gonna make the video way too long. And so guys, stay tuned for part two. If you have not subscribed yet, then go ahead and do so. But otherwise, if this video has helped you out, then please consider a like. And so before we go, I do want to leave you guys with a secret question. And that is, did any of these tips help you? Which one is your favorite tip? Because for me personally, I actually really like the skipping mobs tip in which you get a stamina refund. I was actually only told that like towards the end of the CBT and like I was, I was pretty freaking shocked. But otherwise, if you could leave your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, as a creepy statue once said, because this guy actually moves, he told me, it's a true story, guys. He told me that all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.